What's up, everybody? All right, so um, we are talking about how I lost seventy thousand dollars in four months. Um, this is a story way back before Turo. Uh, this is kind of back when it was known as relay rides. Um, they have absolutely nothing to do with why I lost this money, and they're act and they they actually end up being kind of a saving grace for me. Um, so. Uh, a few years back, about four years back, uh, I was running a tax business and I was in my first year of running a tax business. And surprisingly, I made a lot of money running a tax business. Um, and this is like around the time where, you know, they was given like, you know, college credits and stuff like that. So um, we, we used to get a lot of college kids like that was like almost 60 percent of our business getting all these college kids to qualify for that credit and then getting paid off of it. So. Uh, me and my business partner, uh, China, um, uh, we did probably about a hundred thousand dollars in sales in about four months. Um, after paying employees and business expenses, like we kind of walked away with just that tax season about forty to about forty thousand dollars each, um, which again is not that bad for three to four months. And for me, for it had been my first year in the business with the tax business. Um, and that's me, you know, that's what me have. I, I didn't have any coach. I learned everything online, YouTubes and and stuff like that. And I just went and got a tax business. I later on shut that down like a year later, because one thing I just had kind of realized like that second year is I don't like to hassle people harass me where their taxes at because the IRS is holding it up or they may owe money. I had threats come to the office. Like my brother had to had to. Uh, luckily, I had my like my brother Cam and y'all probably see him on the channel eventually. Uh, man, listen, my my brother is is he don't play no games, especially when it comes to me. Like he keep that thing on him, <laughs> you know. So we had one guy calling our office back to back, uh, giving us death threats. Like I'm a oh I'm gonna f you up, I'm gonna f you up, bought my tax money, bought my tax money. Man, I swear I swear to y'all, this boy was getting back three hundred dollars. I bullshit you not. Three hundred dollars. And he was crying, crying, crying. And this is like one of the first year where the IRS really started taking their time. You know, what I mean, usually everything was just kind of, um, you know, you file your stuff. You know what it is. Everything's up and running. And every now and then you get a couple of delays. But this is like a period where IRS was just really slowing things, slowing things down. There was time to prevent a lot of fraud, which I understood. But the clients didn't understand. Um, and they 100% um, had to blame on us. And we had one guy pull up, like, come on to the office, just like he said he was. And my brother had to pull up <laughs> and and, and, and uh, pull that thing out on him to get him to leave. Um, it scared scared the, the girls I had working for me at the time so bad, I had to let them go home. And I didn't let them come back for two, three days um, about this guy. We filed a police report on him. Um because we had him on camera coming there, irate and, you know, trying to slam shit down. Like, man, it was crazy, man. But um, it was a couple other cases like that, not as bad. But, you know, stuff like that happens with the tax business um, that I'm just not down for. And um, and the IRS was always constantly changing their rules and qualifications. The one company I'm not playing with is the IRS. So I stopped doing that. But before I stopped doing it, I had already thought about getting into exotic car rentals. Um, I had been, um, at the tax season and at the time I was, well, I'm still am, I'm a military based contractor. So at the time, um, I was making a lot of money. Um, I think tw this was like 2015. So this is like my best year financially by myself. This without my wife, I did a half a million dollars a year and I, in the bank, in my bank account, I had like a hundred some thousand saved, one hundred fifty thousand dollars saved. So I was doing well, and I was young. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm thirty two now. I was like twenty, you know, twenty seven. Um, so I, at that time, like a hundred grand to me now ain't nothing. That like that's that's nothing, you know. But then, like as a young kid, I I had made money, but I had never been able to save that amount of money. You know what I mean? So I had already I had started renting exotic cars now. 
At this point in my life, I had not owned a Zyda car. My best car I had ever owned was a BMW 650i. It was a 2010 convertible. It was fully custom. Like, it was, man, my BMW was everything, man. That thing was a showstopper, everything it went. But still, it's not considered exotic. Um, my goal has always been to own a Lamborghini. I'm, I've always been a Lamborghini guy. I've always been obsessed with them. Um, and, you know, when they came out with the Gallardo, that was just like, wow, anyone can afford that if you just put in a little bit of hard work, you know, because they was going used for like, you know, like a 0405 was going for like 110, 120. And here in Atlanta, it don't matter what year Lamborghini you got. <laughs> like, it's a Lamborghini. That's all people see. You, you done made it. You know, you can have the, 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 the most stripped down, based, uh, Lamborghini Gallardo um, on in, in the planet and in Atlanta you made it <laughs> you know it's real easy it's not like Miami like Miami the things are dime a dozen but here in Atlanta um, a Lamborghini you rich in, in, in other people's eyes you know what I mean um, so I had test drove five cars that I was interested in um, that was the it was a BMW i8, which I end up owning, but that's another story. Um, uh, BMW i8. Um, I didn't like the power behind the i8. Um, it was great looking, and them doors did everything, but it wasn't a true exotic car. Um, I trust a tester of the 911 Carrera, which out of all the cars was the overall best car to do everything right. I mean, this damn thing get 30 miles a gallon. But doing zero to sixty in four seconds flat, convertible top, um, the, the the transmission, the PDK transmissions were damn near bulletproof. So, um, I test drove like four or five cars. The Porsche now that was actually my favorite, but I knew it wasn't going to do what I needed to do. So then I test drove a Gallardo, and I absolutely fell in love, like instantly. And the car was is so impractical. Um, and it's so so annoying to drive. But man, when you are going 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, and you hear that V10 in the back, yo. I'm talking about, I never played the radio in this car, ever. Because the V10 sound just sounded like, oh my God, it just sounded like heaven. Like, I miss it. Like, I, I haven't owned a V10 since then. Like, God, it was so intoxicating. Um, so, at the test driving, um, all those cars, I end up going with a Lamborghini Gallardo. But, this is what happened beforehand. Before I bought the Lamborghini Gallardo, I had I was I was selling cars, um, cash cars. So I would go to the auction. I, I mentioned in one of my videos before that I would go to the auction um, and buy little cars and resell them. So I go buy like a there was a auction company called like I can't remember. I think it was like Peachtree or something. Like that. I can't remember their name, but they closed down. But like they had cheap ass cars, man. Like I got like a Dodge Stratus for like. 400 bucks i put like 300 dollars in and it sold it for two grand like oh my god that was the easiest that was the easiest money i was making um back then as well too because i could literally get a car for 500 dollars, put a little bit of work some cars i didn't even have to put no work in it people bought it as is you know what i mean but um um i had an ad out for a chevy equinox and a guy called me about it said he has a friend looking for one so i was like okay cool so uh he said, what else you got? I said, uh, this is why I made a mistake. Um, he said, so what else you got? I said, well, I'm a new dealer. Um, the cars I got has been selling out. I got a lot of money, so I'm, I plan on going to get a whole bunch of cars. So whatever you need, just let me know, and I'll go get it for you at a discounted rate. At the time, I didn't realize how damaging that. I mean, that's what entices this guy to get in contact with me. Um saying that I had a lot of money. So he said, well, he said, hey, man, I have a business opportunity for you. I think it'd be good for you. Uh, can I meet you? So I was like, yeah, sure. And, and, and now listen, this guy, his name was Lamont Brooks. He sounds just like Barack Obama. Damn near look like him, damn near talk like him. I mean, God, this dude swagger was off the chain. So he came to my tax office, pulled up in a Maserati Gran Turismo. This is before I owned one. Um, so he kind of had me with that too. Already having a uh, having an exotic car comes in the office, tells me that he's opening an exotic car rental company. He has about five cars. Uh, he's looking to get exotic cars, and he's looking for partners. Um, I said, like, okay. I said, and for me at the time, it was like a coincidence. I was like, I was like, dude, you shitting me? I was just in the market looking for an exotic car. Like, wow. Like, I 
like the timing couldn't be more perfect um, because I had rent out, I rent, I've rented out exotic cars before, so I know how much money it was. I've spent two, three grand on a weekend renting out a car before, so I know the money was there. So like, I'm like, yo, this is a no brainer. So um, he said, well, just come to my office. We'll talk more about it. So uh, about three days later, I go to his office. Uh, and his office is gorgeous. It's all, it was off of Norcross. It was a call Atlanta Exotic Cars. Um, it was freaking gorgeous. Um, when I walked in, um, the the uh, the space was nice and plush. TVs everywhere. You go inside the garage. He had a, he already had a Range Rover, a Panamera, uh, the Maserati, um, another Range Rover, but it was a little bit older. And like a seven series BMW, and at that and and customers was going in and out at that time. So the proposal for the deal was: is I go get the car, um, they will insure the car because at the time before Turo, it was extremely difficult to get commercial insurance, like really difficult to get rental commercial insurance. That's why it was so hard for anyone else to really get into the rental car market because insurance was so hard to, uh, and I found that out through him. And then I had to do my research to find out that, wow, it is really difficult to get commercial insurance to rent your cars out on plat. Uh, I mean, to rent your cars out yourself. Cause I was just going to do this manually. I was going to go get the cars, rent them out myself um, and, and learn as I go. So the, the proposed deal was I get the car. He manages everything. Everything. I don't have to do nothing but collect it. He manages everything. Um, I take sixty percent. He takes forty percent. That covers the the uh, the maintenance that cover uh, what well, just regular maintenance that that covers uh, um, them going in and out. Them already having a platform with all the customers and the clients. Um, so at the time, we 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 knew that the Gallardo would rent out for about a thousand dollars a day. Um, and the calculation was based on, uh, about 14 days a month. So 14 days a month at a thousand dollars, about $14,000 a month. So I would be making initially off this car about, what's that? About, about $8,000 a month. Not bad. Cause basically in a year's time, I could own the car. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm like, oh shit, great. So I talked it over with my business partner, China. Um, she was just like, she was like, oh no, Jay, some something real fun. And we can kind of do it ourselves. Cause um my friend China, she had already had a, a humongous social media following. Like the girl had like 200,000 followers, uh, like a gorgeous Asian, like beautiful. And she's like, well, we can just kind of do this ourselves. It'd be a lot harder, but we can do it ourselves. We don't really need him to 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 do that. But me not listening, seeing that he's already established, he's already done all the hard work for me, just kind of how, like, he was Turo before Turo, you know what I mean? I figured, oh, no, hell no, I'm just going to go with this guy, you know? So um, everything started off with well, the car. Uh, I went and put $30,000 down on a Gallardo. Now, this is before I got educated on credit and business credit and personal credit and 750 credit score like i was a cash guy i was a guy man i walk in a lot if you tell me 10 grand down for a car shit okay just give it to me you know what i mean i thought that that was the thing to do like i was again i was miseducated um on understanding credit like that same car, someone going to go get it with zero money down. I just put 10 grand down on that and, I, and i'm thinking i'm the man i'm thinking cash is king so i'm the man so um, I qualified for the Lambo, but again, they wanted 30 grand down. So I put $30,000 down on the vehicle. Um, he said that he was getting insurance on the vehicle, so I won't have to get it. I mean, so he has, you know, he has the commercial insurance, so he put it on his policy. I'm still to this day, not sure if he ever did or not. Um, I really don't know. Uh, I don't know if he put it on a personal policy or, or, or a business policy. So about the first month, the car went, the, the car went in and out instantly. When I mean instantly, the car went in and out instantly uh, and it was going all the time everyone who was somebody in atlanta was renting this car and i'm talking about celebrities like uh it was in like a day day video a little baby video like when little baby like first came out you know what i mean like it was uh um uh, young jeezy young jeezy videos it was in and i was meeting i was rubbing elbows with stars bro shaking hand with stars so bro i was starstruck man i'm gonna lie like i'm like yo this is the life and then i just got people everywhere hit me up about the cars because of course i'm promoting it you know what i mean so then he pops up with a bentley gt 
pops up with a Bentley GT. Um, I was like, oh, man, Dan, why didn't you tell me he's going to get another car? I would have invested with that, too. He said, well, man, you still can. He said, I put down, he said, I put down eight grand down on this car. If you give me back the eight grand, we can run the same exact deal, and I can take that eight grand and go get another car. I was like, oh, no shit? Okay, cool. So we did another contract. Uh, gave him $8,000 down on the Bentley. So now I'm supposed to be making money off the Bentley and a Lamborghini. Now, a month has gone by. I haven't been paid. So, I mean, I mean, because I'm supposed to get paid once a month. So uh, on the 15th. So the 15th of the next month, I'm asking, hey, where's my payment? He said, hey, I just need you to bear with me. Uh, you know, we ran into some issues. The cars the cars had some major issues. Uh, the Lamborghini had uh, some issues. Cause, now, because this is another mistake I made. I fucked around and bought a Lamborghini Gallardo with 39,000 miles. Now, in any regular car, that could be an S-Class, a Honda Civic, a, a Range Rover, a Jeep Wrangler. It can be any of that, and that's nothing. And a Lamborghini, man, that's like 200,000 damn miles, or at least 100,000 miles. Like, that's a high mileage as exotic car, but again me not being educated you know what i mean like most of the shit i had to shoot myself in the foot um for it um but i was just so excited to get my first lamborghini man i had made a post on facebook man it had got like 500 600 likes like everyone's so proud my brother's so proud mama's so proud everyone's just so proud and i'm just i'm just living it living this dream like here I am, like I'm feeling like you know how you hear about like rappers, they they say they first deal with shit, you know what I mean? They they get all the the acolytes and the awards and the fame, but the the, the deal they sign is shit, you know what I mean? They not they not really getting any money or they're going broke after the, the after that 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 uh, single dies down or the second song dies down, they're broke. I'm kind of in that same situation because here I am. Luckily, I make money in other. In other other different ways so i have this look that i got it all together and meanwhile now two and a half three months that went by i have not been paid so now at this point i'm getting frustrated because he told me it was some things that went wrong with the car he had to fix like some things it was like two thousand dollars three thousand and in one case he had showed me something um that you know uh, problems with the car and then but um i didn't see the price on what it was to fix but he had told me like three thousand dollars so um, he said, he said, don't worry about it, man. I'm gonna get you right, but please just let me take care of the maintenance. And when the car gets back on the road, you get paid everything you're supposed to get paid. Okay, cool. Now, cause the men at, at this point, me and him partners, like we, we don't went out to club Onyx together. We don't went to the mall together. I don't seen him pull. Now, mind you, he married. I'm watching him pull every young girl he see because he went and got a Lamborghini Huracan. I had the Gallardo. He somehow got a Lamborghini Huracan. So, and, and that also made me be like, yo, man, I'm, I'm in the right place, yo. I'm feeling so good. He went and got a $250,000, uh, brand, the brand new Lamborghini. Shit, I'm happy with the old one. He got the brand new Lamborghini. Um, so I'm really thinking I'm in the right place and he's investing the money and I'm going to see all my returns on my investment. So, but now again, we're on month three. I'm like, yo, my boy, you got to give me something. Like you haven't paid me nothing, my man. I got bills to pay, dog. I could have took this same amount of money and got that car without you, dog, and made money just off of photo shoots and video shoots, homie. I did not need you for that. And now it's been three months and... I done referred people to the company. People who know me is shopping with you because of me. You know what I mean? And you you ain't paid me nothing. Now, like, now here go, man. Like, hey, hey, man, here go a couple grands. You know what I mean? Um, here you go. We good to go. This man ain't paid me shit, man. So, um, about month four or five, about month four, I bring my ex-stepdad up there. Um, uh, um, love this guy though. He broke up with my mom, but he was, he was, uh, he's, he, he's one of the smoothest guys I ever met in my life. And I just love him. He came up there to the office just to see everything that was going on, like check on me, see how I was doing. And I told him I'm into exotic car rentals. Yada, 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 give him a spill. Didn't tell him I haven't been paid, but he said, okay, well, I just want to come up to the office. He come up to the office. He meets Lamont. The next thing you know, two weeks later, I see another Bentley pop up, a white one with a blue top. So, I'm like, oh, cool, cool, cool. This is cool. So the dude who came with my father, because my father came with another friend, I'm seeing him at the office now. I'm like, why are you here? Like, why are you at the office, my boy? Like, 
what business did you got? Are you just here to just take pictures and flex in front of the cars? Like, you one of those guys, you know? But turns out, this motherfucker gave Lamont a grand to go get another car. So I had to call, I called my pops. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what the fuck y'all doing? I said, I said, pops, I've invested with him for three, four months. I haven't been paid. Why did y'all go and invest with him? Why wouldn't y'all have a, 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 a why wouldn't y'all talk to me about that? He said, oh man, um, me and him just got to talk. We had a relationship. I said, pops, you should have never went over my head, man. Like I would, I would have, I would have gave you all the nitty gritty. It was no point of me telling you what my financial situation had going on because that's that was between me and him. But there was no way in hell I'm gonna let you invest with this cat when he ain't even paid me that whole eight grand he gave you. He should have gave that to me because at this point he owed me about a good fifteen racks. So, but see, his the thing about my my ex step pops, like he he was a I'm talking about really in the streets, like Memphis in the streets, heavy like. Crips, all that shit. Like he was not the one to fuck with, like at all. So um, he gave the man a chance. After month, he wasn't getting paid. Month two come up, wasn't getting paid. So then he just started popping up at the office. Got to the point to at one time, um, he straight told him he wasn't leaving the office until he get a check. Made Lamont um, come up with it was only like a thousand dollars, but it was just something to get him to go away. Um, after that. About a month went by. No, about two, three weeks went by. And I'm like, yo, pop. So I'm ready to run up on them. I need my money. Like, I got these contracts. But what ended up happening was I ended up um, Googling him. And I saw he had a record. Um, he had a record for, uh, like, fraud and stuff like that. It was very, like, old stuff. But it still, it was there. So then it was another guy who popped up on the Internet to say they uh, that, uh, who wrote a, a whole report about Lamont stealing a Corvette from him and a Mercedes GL. So I'm like, what the hell? I ended up getting in contact with the guy and our, our stories was extremely similar. Um, so, and he wanted me to get in on the lawsuit, but then after I talked to my lawyer about it, he said, Hey, well, just make sure this guy has assets before you sue him. You may sue him and just get a piece of paper saying that he owes you money. If they can't collect the money, there's nothing you can do. You you just literally had a piece of pay and saying that this person owes you money. But if he has no assets in his name, if he doesn't own his house, if he doesn't own any cars, if he doesn't have a job, there's nothing you can do. And guess what? Show enough. This is when I really learned how twisted and fucked up our legal system is. Because show enough, he didn't have nothing in his name. On paper, he divorced his wife on paper. Puts everything in her name, but you can't go after her. You can't do shit. Um, like, man, like, bro, it was so crazy. I'm like, yo, I'm dealing with a real con artist. Like, I just really got conned out of this money. So not only did I put the 30 grand down on a car, but he owes me at this point about 40 grand. So now he owe me about $70,000. So at this point, I'm like, hey, man, I'm just taking the car back. Um, um, what was that? Uh, about so me, my pops, and we had like ten guys with us. Like I won't man, like we was not playing. We found out where he lived, everything. We get to his house. No one lives there anymore. Now, mind you, he was just there. He was just there. They found out he was just there, but he doesn't live there no more. We go up to the office. Everything is gone. The, every, everything's shut, all the furniture's gone out the place, all the cars in the back are gone, everything's gone, even the Lambo. Um, everything's gone. Um, but turns out, um, before I get into that part, the Lamborghini had got totaled out by a client. And when it got totaled out, um, luckily, someone else hit the car. Uh, yeah, someone else hit the Lamborghini. Thankfully, that was the case. Because remember, I still don't know if he had insurance on the car or not. Um, someone hit the car, so they had to pay out, uh, for the vehicle. I did end up getting like maybe like 10 grand back off of that, but it, it, it didn't make up for what I lost. Uh, it definitely didn't. Um, but after that, um, I found out that the Lamborghini Huracan, he got that through somebody else's name and it, he's so dirty. He met this guy through his kid's soccer practice. Like your, your, your kid and his kid play ball together. And you going to con this man out of a Lamborghini, didn't pay him at all. Didn't pay him a single dime on nothing. Same as well. So 
we we had all it had ended up being like 10 of us 10 12 of us where he duped and when i tell you this guy was smooth y'all this guy was smooth man like i'm talking about he talked just like barack obama like with the same type of prestigious and he and he literally will make you feel like everything is okay. He was a real he was the first person who really got over me. I've never really been played like that. I've been I've had little shit happen, you know, growing up, little dumbass hundred dollar plays or fifty dollars plays, but I have never been gotten like that before. And to, and now because of that, I'm so paranoid with everyone and everything. Like if I don't know you, know you, and I can't research you, can't find you, yo, I'm not fucking with you, yo. Like at all. Like I cannot be, I cannot become a victim of someone else. I, I'm at that point in my life where, bro, you try to play me out some money, bro, like, just already know it's going to go to blows, bro. Like, I'm not playing no more. Like, if you're going to hit me up about some business, bro, make sure your ass is far away from me if you plan on fucking me up, bro, because I'm going to find you. Like, that's just where I got, you know, that's just where I got to in my mind. I have PTSD when it comes to trust issue with anything financial. You know what I mean? So... So in the, in the end, I think I ended up being a gift. You know what I mean? I, I had to kind of look at that like, okay, that taught me a valuable lesson, a very expensive lesson, but a seventy thousand dollar lesson nonetheless. So Lamont went completely MIA, ghost. I heard rumors that he went to Miami. Heard rumors he went to uh, New York, but him and his family was gone. So and he couldn't have left just because a little old me. Like I'm just one guy. Me me personally, I'm just gonna beat your ass. There's nothing really more I can do. Besides knock you the fuck out. If you ain't got the money, you ain't got the money. You know what I mean? So he, you didn't move because of little old me. And then my pops, he gangster, but not enough to make you move. So we we just assumed that he must have owed someone major for him not to pay no one. No one. You ain't pay no one. You, you either got all the money and plan on leaving. And so you can go somewhere else and do the same thing. Or you owe someone a lot of freaking money. And you was trying to pay them back by calling everyone else, creating more devils in your life. I don't know, man, but that crushed me. It, it, it I literally, um, it took me a year and a half to bounce back from that. I went from riding in, I had sold, it's crazy, I had sold my six years, my six years was paid off. I had sold it and I bought me like a little Silverado truck. It was like a 2000, but it was just supposed to be my runaround car because I knew I was getting an exotic car. So, I'm, but I'm not going to be driving that every freaking day. You know what I mean? So I had to, uh, I bought the truck for that, but I ended up being stuck with the truck. I end up, I was end up stuck with that truck for a year. I'm, here I am, Big Bad J, Mr. Make Money, Mr. Lamborghini, riding around in a 2000 Chevy Silverado. But I ain't going to lie, that motherfucker never broke down on me, though. Like, that truck was everything. It took, um, but it took a lot for me to bounce back, like, to, to, uh, from that loss. And like I said, I was on my way up and I ended up going right back down and having to start completely over. And when I had discovered Turo and Relay Ross was right at the, when I, it was right at the very end. I had bought the, the Cadillac Escalator 2008 with the 10,000 I had got back from the, um, from the Lamborghini, I put like four grand down on it. And that's how my tour career started. Um, like literally, like the timing couldn't have been no, couldn't have been more perfect. Um, and that saved me from, you know, um, really feeling like a complete failure because Turo, Turo really helped me, especially with my pride and my ego, man. So that's the story, man. You know what I mean? Like y'all just, y'all just be careful who y'all trust. Um, you can't believe everything someone says. Make sure you ask them for proof for everything. I, I used to take people at face value. I do not now. Like you, you, you got to show me. You want me to invest in them? So you got to show me your bank account. You got to show me your name on the bank. And you can't just show me statements. Nah, you got to pull the shit up on a, on, on your on your shit. Like if you some guru and you and you doing all this, you want me to invest? Show me how much money you have made. Like I have to see it. Like. But Tommy with my Amazon store that I put 25000 on, Tommy showed me. I flew my ass down there to Florida. I was not playing with his ass either. I, I flew my ass down there, and it took a lot for me to give away $25,000. But he had all the proof I need, man. And and I haven't, I, I, I haven't regretted that decision yet, yo. Like, like man. <laughs> like, yeah, I just can't believe, like, I'm so paranoid now. And I mind you, 
I've only had my Amazon store for two years, so it took me three years after that that, it, that issue with Lamont to be comfortable enough to invest with someone else. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's just where I'm at with it. Um, I'm just super paranoid, man. I must rather just take these precautions, man. So, y'all, y'all just make sure, man. Y'all just be weary of all these people. Everyone's trying to make money online. Everyone, uh, everyone locally can look like somebody, especially when you're in a big city like Atlanta. Everybody think they somebody, man. And everyone can portray to somebody. Y'all just be careful, man. It's, it's, it's these folks out here faking they well. They telling you, oh, I just signed up five, six people for this. And I can't believe my team is doing this. Shut your lying ass up. Shut your ass up, man. Stop lying. Stop your goddamn lying. Don't tell us. Show us. Show us your team then, homie. You know what I mean? But they're just one mat with a dog. So don't be stupid like me, man. That was the stupidest decision I ever made in my life. And I went off the of glamour and off of word of mouth. And I learned that I cannot trust people at their word, do my own research, find out exactly who they is, and then go from there. Y'all peace out, man. Y'all have a good day. And I appreciate you listening to this long ass story. It was 30 minutes long. I'm, some of y'all probably done clicked off already. But if you're not, man, there you go. That's the meat and potatoes.